Hello and welcome to Boss Over TV. My name is Michael. Let's take a look at what's been making the headlines this week. The council wants sports clubs, athletes, schools and individuals to be nominated for the Staying Active Awards. Men are being asked not to bottle up as a new group has formed in South Normanton. The popular Bolsover Gala is returning after an absence of two years. And we go behind the scenes with playground inspector Paul Jessup to see just how he keeps our playground safe and open. But first, Sharbrook, like many other towns and villages across Bolsover district, thrived on coal. The pit was the main source of employment and the town grew. When it was open, the colliery brought families together. It created lifelong friendships and it helped bring prosperity to the area. And although the colliery closed almost 30 years ago in 1993, this did not stop the camaraderie in the town and a handful of former miners started a fundraising campaign to raise money for a sculpture to be erected on the marking place, remembering the town's coal mining heritage and all those that work there. So far, they've raised over £100,000 to date, and we caught up with Bruce Towers, one of the committee members, to see how it was all going. Well, at the present time, we're up to £165,000, just over, and we're expecting to raise 180000 maybe just over, because we've got other things to do, as well as the opening day. It's to commemorate a miner working underground for the future of his family above ground. That's why the, the family is above him. And the dress has shaped it to shape as it is because number two headstocks was there were only one in the world set at an angle like it was. I think we're up to 1,500 names, a hundred pound a name. So you can see the interest. It'll be a one-off. It'll be absolutely stunning in the middle of Sharbrook Market for, every, for generations to come. It's going to be in bronze, 20 feet high, with a five feet plinth, black granite to obviously black for coal. All the names will be inlaid into it. And on the back of the monument, there'll be 74 men's name that died at Sharbrook Colliery. People can still come down to Sharbrook Manor's Welfare, usually on a Thursday. Uh, 9 o'clock while 12, donate to have the name put on the monument. They don't have to have worked at Colliery. You don't have to have worked at the pit or any pit. You can come because it's going to be a, a piece of artwork for community. Now, we've all seen the reports that maintaining good mental health is vital for us to lead a happy and productive life, but it's probably easier said than done. And it can be especially difficult for men who often feel they need to hide the way that they feel. A new mental health support group called Bottled Up Blokes has started in South Normanton with the aim of helping men to open up in a safe and supportive environment. The group offers a range of ways to get support, including a WhatsApp group and face-to-face -face peer support sessions. We went to meet Tim and Ben from the group to find out more. I'm a, a man myself that suffers with mental health issues, so I know how difficult it can be for somebody with mental health problems and difficulties to talk. Um, so I just wanted to get people to be able to open up a bit more, really. When Tim started, uh, you know, I wasn't involved in the building of it. I was, uh, I was a, very much a member, um, but we had a conversation around things that we'd like to do and, and always fancied a podcast and we thought it'd be good to just have a chat on... Uh, you know, over a Zoom call, record it and, and, and see what happens. I mean, the podcast is out on, you know, it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, all the kind of place where you can get it. And it's been... It is the fact that you, you keep things to yourself. So because as a man, you, you do bottle everything up, to get it out, it will get the reaction of, oh, I didn't know that. You've never told me that. And that, that's why we're doing it. That's why we want to have this group to give people that platform to feel safe enough to open up. We've got a group here, we, you know, we're at the church hall at the moment, there's a group here on a Thursday night at 7.30 um, and it's just men talking it is, and it, it's just that simple. It's just men coming and having a chat and there's some serious stuff, we have a laugh. Um, you know, there's, there's no kind of need for someone to come in and feel uncomfortable, you don't have to speak, you can just come and listen. The main thing for us is to try and get men to speak because the suicide rates uh, for men are horrible. It's, I think it's three quarters of suicides are men. Yeah, one man dies every two hours by suicide. So we, just us doing our little group, if we help one person from stops and doing that, again, it's a success. 
Sports clubs, athletes, schools, volunteers and officials are being encouraged to put themselves forward for the Staying Active Awards. Bolsover District Council and the Bolsover District Active School Network want to showcase and celebrate all the great ways individuals or groups have been keeping fit and staying active over the past couple of years. From online club socials and training sessions to family bike rides and virtual school competitions, there have been some great ways of helping local people keep fit. The council is continuing to invest in its housing stock as they've added another nine homes to their portfolio, this time in Creswell. The two two-bedroom houses and four three-bedroom houses on Church Hole Close and the three two-bedroom houses on Rock Art Close are on the Avent Homes development in the village. Now, after missing out for the past two years, Bolsover Gala is back. Now in its 15th year, the gala is one of the town's biggest events and attracts thousands of people throughout the day who are entertained by traditional acts, music, stalls and children's performers. We spoke to organisers Michelle Smith and Janet Woodhead about what people can expect at this year's event. I think it's a fabulous thing for the community. People love it. it, it it's what they wait for. This park is absolutely full from 10 o'clock till half past four and if it's really sunny and not like this <laughs> we will have all on getting rid of them at half past four it, it's fabulous day fabulous not to be missed we've got such a lot of stuff going off to entertain the kids uh, families it's a free entrance to the park uh, but there's entertainment going on all day in the arena we've got arena acts we've got singers we've got side stalls we've got side shows um, we've got animals, uh, food and drink, lots of craft stalls for local people. Basically something to get everybody back into uh, an event that's been stagnant for a couple of years because of Covid. You'll absolutely love it and be talking about it for weeks after. And finally, have you ever wondered how that broken chain on a child's swing gets fixed? Who cleans up all that litter from your nearby playground? Or how that slide miraculously never seems to be out of order. Well, in the first of our series of Behind the Scenes, where we look at council services and how they are delivered, we joined up with Playground and Open Spaces Warden Paul Jessup to see what he does and how he keeps our playground safe for children to enjoy. It's an invisible job. That's what I, I do say to people, that it's an invisible job. Um, we try and get in and out, start early when it's daylight, get the jobs done, because we want kids to play. When you arrive on a play site, what are you looking for? The first thing, obviously, is, is like we just said, is the litter, graffiti. Look to see if any point, anything majorly damaged, fire damage, etc. Because it does happen. Uh, and after that, we go to secondary looking at are the swings vandalised? Does the chains look like they need knotted? And it's just, it's the, again, it's the invisible jobs we have to look at and act, get them done, so as we can. We have a um, system on, the, on our phones called the PSS and I do my inspections onto that. So everything from chains to floor to um, grass, tr overhanging trees, we put in what I think is necessary. And then we have uh, low risk, medium risk, high risk. As you can see here, where this lip is here, I mean, it's classed as a, as a trip edge where it's just come away from the edge. You can see it's only a finger width distance, oh, wow, yeah. but... I'll come off it. But this is what happens. You can wow. see where it's glued in, etc. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut from here where the edging is from here. I'm going to cut from here right over to here. I'm just going to take this corner completely out and just lay the corner back with new, um, new wet pour. And hopefully that'll stop that curling up. So, Because this is the main play area of it, is, is, is the slide. So we have to look for sharp edges and we just use as visual first. Just see if there's not any sharp edges and we can just give it a bit of a tug. Basically then we just give it a shake. If I can shake it, I do climb up onto the stairs and I'll give it a good jump and down. And if you can notice on here, wear and tear, we've replaced the loop chains with these very links. Um, slips in quite easy, but you can see there where the black marks are, where the chain's swinging. It does actually wear, but we've re I've replaced all these just for, I mean, they'll, they'll last another five, six years. It must be this the element, I go back to the shadows question again, really. It's not thankless, because it's definitely not thankless, but you go and do your work and uh, you, you know you're playing your part without really being thankless yeah, for I, it. I don't think I, 
I kind of enjoy what I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Some people don't like the job. I, I kind of like mine, yeah. It's, it's, it, like I said, I get results and I can walk away proud that there's been a job done. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll all agree what an amazing job Paul does to make sure the children have somewhere safe and enjoyable to play. So, Paul, well done. But I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I look forward to seeing you next week on Bolsover TV when we'll be visiting the Zeon Church in South Normanton to see how it could be turned into a community venue. So stay tuned for that. But for now, goodbye.